Hello there, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to draw a Spartan logo in Adobe Illustrator. Now, if you clicked on the thumbnail and you saw all the circles and the lines, you may be thinking, ah, this is a golden ratio tutorial. Well, we're not going to be covering the golden ratio specifically. However, I'm going to show you how to draw the Spartan logo that you can see on screen, borrowing principles from the golden ratio. So we're not going to be using the golden spiral and paying too much attention to the proportion, but we are going to be using lots of circles and lines to create this logo. So we're kind of borrowing some of those principles. So at the moment, I've got my design on screen. I actually started this on the computer using a tablet. So I've applied a brush effect and rasterized this. Um, so it simulates kind of a sketch. So if you have your design on paper, that's great. Scan it in, take a photo, get it into Illustrator, and hopefully it will look something like this. And it will be on layer one. So what we can do is let's just go ahead and we'll call that sketch. And we'll just lock that layer. And we'll create a new layer and we'll just call this guides and this is where we're going to be adding our guides in a moment so the first step is to just to look at this and understand that we have lots of curves in here we've got a lot of straight lines those will be pretty easy to do but we have lots of curves we've got this bit up here big swoosh here and then we've got the kind of the dome of the helmet as well now we could use the pen tool for this however you're just never going to get it perfectly smooth unless you're like a total pen tool guru master so I think for this we're going to be using the ellipse tool so if we left click the ellipse tool and just left click and hold shift to draw a circle a perfect circle and we'll go ahead and we'll double click a swatch and we'll just select global and click OK and let's just go to the stroke panel and just beef up that weight a little bit so all the guides that we create now are going to be using this pink stroke and we're just going to move this circle into position and hold shift. That's very important to hold shift because it will keep this proportional. If we kind of don't hold shift, it will skew out of shape. And at the moment, we don't want that. So we'll hold shift and scale up from the corner. And we're just going to try and create circles within elements of our design that we can do. So what I can do is I can select the circle that I've just created. Go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place and hold shift and scale this down and you can see that fits nicely in there and then I can select this one and you can go to edit copy edit paste in place or you can just hold the alt key and drag the shape and it will create that copy now we're going to keep this one the same size we don't want too many different sizes ideally and we can just position that here and we're going to use that to create that curve at the back of the helmet and you can go into outline mode that's command or control y and this is quite important because when you've got stroke weights it's very difficult to see where your lines actually are do they touch do they not so by going into outline mode we can just make sure that these definitely definitely line up like so zoom in you know 60,000 percent if you need to make sure they touch and when they zoom out perfect and then that's command or control Y to come out of outline mode. Brilliant. So there we go. Now these lines here, these straight lines are going to be relatively easy. And we can go up to view down to smart guides. I definitely recommend keeping your smart guides on. Uh, it just makes life a lot easier. And again, we're going to go into outline mode. No, we're not because we can't see our design that way. So it's very handy, but we can't actually see our background image. But that's fine. If you need to, actually, you can select all the pink and just change the stroke weight down to 0.1 or something, if you like. Okay, so it nicely marks that anchor point, which is great. Thank you very much, Illustrator. And it goes to draw our line. But let's hold Shift, keep that nice and vertically straight. And left click. Okay. So we're drawing this line up here now. Now, I want to keep all these lines here at a 45 degree angle and I can do that by holding shift so if I hold shift it will snap from 0 to 45 to 90 degrees like so and we'll just left click and I'm still holding down shift and left click again where this circle kind of intersects here still holding shift so we've got these lines being drawn at a 45 degree angle 
and a 90 degree angle. There we go. You can see that smart guide there very nicely lines it up for me. And we can press escape to come out of the pen tool. Now let's just zoom in. So this has gone a little bit off. Okay, that's fine. Not a problem. We just select the direct selection tool and we'll left click this anchor point. Hold shift, left click this one. So now they're both selected. And we just need to move these back. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm making sure that I don't lose that angle. I don't want to do this. We want to keep that line straight, but I do need to bring it back in line. And we just zoom in again. Select this anchor point and bring that up. And it will snap nicely in place. Thank you very much, Smart Guides. And we'll do the same over here. Now, for this particular design, this section here isn't 45 degrees. That was just a personal design choice when creating this logo. So I'm just going to click down here. That is fine. This one is fine as well. In fact, this entire back part was just kind of freestyle, really. I didn't really follow the same uh, kind of principles that I'd applied to the first half. No particular reason, just because I preferred this sort of kind of shape to the back. Okay, cool. So we've done the main part of the helmet now. Now let's select this circle we originally created and we'll go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in Place. And we'll hold shift and scale that up. So we're trying to get this to line up. We're still holding shift and we're just scaling from the different corners just to try and get it in the right position. And it's important to hold shift just so we don't skew it out of shape. Okay, we'll get it as close as we can. And again, we'll select that one, go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place and hold shift and scale up again. Okay, and we're just going to move that down, scale it from this corner. So it's just really a case of scaling it from all of the different corners and just trying to get everything to line up with your design. If you can get like, you know, circles, straight lines, whatever, um, it will just kind of help it look a little bit more proportionally correct. Okay. So we've got this circle here and again, edit, copy, edit, paste in place. Now we're going to make sure we move this circle on a kind of 45 degree line up and to the left. So if we hold down shift as we drag this, it will keep moving it like so. And then we can go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, hold shift, scale this down a bit. And then I'm going to bring that up. And in fact, I will actually just select all of my lines now and just drop that stroke down to one point. Just so I can see a bit better here. So there we go. And if I need to, I can zoom in. Remember to hold shift and just bring that back down. Bring it in a little bit to the right and downwards. Now, the good thing is at the beginning, we put these on separate layers so I can switch off my sketch and this is what I'm left with. So essentially we've created our logo out of all these different shapes, but we can't really use this at the moment. So what we're going to do is at this stage, personally, I like to select everything, go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, as always, <laughs> hold shift and use the right arrow key. And we'll just nudge that off the artboard. So I've got a copy over there before I go and start breaking this apart and uh, kind of progressing the design just in case anything goes wrong. So we're going to zoom in and just drag over everything. Now you will need a newer version of Illustrator to have the shape builder tool and this is going to make life incredibly easy. So just select that and with everything selected we can now start to create our shape. So you can see we can click in a segment and we can just drag through any other segments that are touching and it will form those into one shape. So again, let's select everything, select the shape builder tool and we'll go down through the bottom part of the helmet here and through the front. 
Now what we can also do is hold down the Alt key and you'll see that plus changes to a minus. And if we drag through some of the elements now, you'll see that they actually are removed from the shape. And you can single left click in them as well whilst holding Alt and it will remove them altogether. In fact, I've just realized there's one bit that I've missed out. So let's just flick on our sketch. And that is this line here. So I'm just going to left click along here with the pen tool and hold shift. Let's try that again. Left click, hold shift and left click again. There we go. We can switch our sketch layer off. And with everything selected, back to the Shape Builder tool. And we can now do that top part. So let's just left click and drag. Now we've added that uh, line at a diagonal 45 degrees. We can now select that like so. We can also hold Alt and we can select all of this out here. We don't need that. So the Shape Builder tool is very powerful and makes short work of something like this. So we can click this part here. This isn't part of the helmet. So hold down the Alt key, left click, and just drag through all of those adjoining segments. And voila, they are removed. Fantastic tool. Okay, so we can hold down Alt, and we're just going to remove this part here. And you can zoom in as far as you need to. And remember, you can single left click as well, just to remove those shapes. You don't have to drag through everything. And you can zoom in as much as you like. Okay, so for the most part, we are getting there. So it looks something like that in outline mode. Now, sometimes this will go perfectly well. You won't have any problems. More often than not, it needs a little bit of love, a little bit of polish. So that is absolutely fine. We just select our direct selection tool and our zoom tool, and we just zoom in. So we have all these kind of little bits here that just didn't kind of work out and that is absolutely fine and perfectly normal. So we just go in and we select all of these kind of random anchor points with a direct selection tool and just hit delete or backspace. Again, we just select. Okay, so there we go, we're all good there. We've got this random one here. So it's just a case of either dragging over or selecting those anchor points and hitting delete or backspace to remove them from our composition, perfect. Zoom in nice and close as well. If you can zoom in 30,000, 60,000%, you can bet that when you zoom back out to 100%, your design will look perfect. Okay, right, so we're following that round. Okay, so we did that diagonal here quite quickly, so we've got these extra little tips on the end. We just drag over those end anchor points. Remember that's using the uh, you can use the main selection tool, but typically the direct selection tool is better at selecting individual anchor points. So I can just click on that there, hit delete or backspace, and then click on that line again, delete or backspace. So it's just a case of doing this until you get something like that. If you do hit delete or backspace and it deletes an entire chunk of your shape or you lose your whole shape altogether, don't worry, just go to edit, undo, Go back a few steps, whatever you need to, and just find out where the problem is. Are there two shapes that aren't connected? Um, if you've got any paths that are disconnected, just zoom in and then maybe connect them back up with the direct selection tool. You can select those anchor points and go to object, path and join, and just link them back together. So this part of the process is very much just a case of going around, polishing everything up, and just kind of, I guess, manipulating those anchor points with the direct selection tool, controlling those paths. You might need to use the pen tool just to kind of redraw some paths depending on your design. All of that is absolutely fine. It's just the, the phase of polishing everything up. And there's lots of different tools that we can use to do that. Okay, so we've got this random line here. We don't really need that. It didn't cut it out with the shape builder tool, but that's fine. We just select it with the direct selection tool, delete or backspace, and it removes it. And we should be able to do that again here. Perfect. Let's zoom in. Can we just remove that little tip there? Yes, we can. Fantastic. Okay. And we've got this bit here. 
We can just drag over all of those. Yeah, there you go. You're not going to get away. We've got one here. So let's just select on that path. And just left click. You might have to do this a few times. <laughs> and this one seems to be giving me particular trouble. So I'm just going to select everything, hit delete or backspace. And as I said a minute ago, it leaves me with an open path. No problem. I could left click here and I could connect that up manually with the pen tool. So we've taken the time to go around and polish up our design and this is how it's looking. So let's come out of outline mode, that's command or control Y. And we have something that looks like this. We've still got those pink outlines. And there's a few different ways we can do this next bit. One way is to just drag over everything and select the live paint bucket. That's under the shape builder tool. Just left click and hold to get that one up. And just swap that fill and stroke and then just click in each of the shapes and it will add that color. Now it's added a stroke back in for some reason but we can just click that and select none. And there we go we have our finished design. Let's select over everything, go to object, expand and just leave object fill and stroke selected. Click OK. And with the fill selected in fact, we don't even need the fill selected. We can just go and change this swatch. Now, because we made it global at the start, we can adjust these values. And every instance of that swatch within our document will update. And we can then use the direct selection tool to individually select these top parts here. And then we can pick another swatch. And set the preview and click OK. Okay, so I've added the color. We're almost finished. The last thing that I'm going to do that I've just noticed is I'm going to double click this shape to go inside it. So I'm inside the group. I can select the red area at the top and I'm just going to adjust that angle. Just so we get a little bit more consistency, just a little bit more in the width along the top of the helmet. And we can come back out of that group there. And there we go. That's how to draw a Spartan logo in Adobe Illustrator. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you next time.